Warning, this sentence is pretty much the longest we're going to go without profanity in this show. This week's episode of The Scathing Atheist is brought to you by Allbirds, Stamps.com, and by Fruit from the Tree of the Knowledge of Good and Evil, if you think about it. Or, or rather, if you, if you don't think about it. And now, The Scathing Atheist. Hello, my name is Joel Foreman, and I am the Bitter Atheist on YouTube. Just wanted to let you know that if intelligent design is real, that means God put the itchy spot in the middle of your back, just barely out of reach, on purpose. So either God's a dick, or we did in fact evolve from filthy monkey people. It's May 27th. And if you're fully vaccinated, Anthony Fauci says you can fuck us. I mean, I'd still prefer you wear a mask while you do it, but that's, you know, more of a sexual preference thing than a safety thing. Okay. <laughs> yeah. right. I'm no illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And from Philip Roth's New Jersey, okay. Cincinnati Red State and Red Town Blue State, this is The Scathing Atheist. On this week's episode, Mother Teresa miraculously keeps sucking after death. <laughs> Triggered by Legos is a mm -hmm. real thing that exists now in reality. Yep. <laughs> and Don Ford will join us for the story of a septuagenarian fuck machine. But first, the diatribe. Our show passed a pretty cool milestone last week. On Friday, the day after our last episode came out, this podcast turned 10, sort of, conceptually. Lately, we haven't been producing shows for 10 years, but May 21st of 2011 was the first time we tried to record an episode. Heath, myself, and a non-Eli third guy recorded a sample episode, and the result was so horrible in every possible way that we decided not to do anything with it at all. The audio quality was shit, the content was all over the map, the humor was strained. Basically, it was a great lesson on how much more shit we needed to learn before we made a podcast. It would be almost two years before we put together our next episode, which became episode one of this show. Now, it might seem odd to some people that I would even remember that date so precisely, unless they remembered what else was going on on precisely that day in history. Or unless they've heard me tell this story before, apologies to longtime listeners if I'm being repetitive here. But it just so happened that our practice record lined up with Harold Camping's prediction for the end of the world. He and his acolytes managed to ignore the fact that this wasn't the first time he'd set a date on the apocalypse and the fact that the radio station that he owned still had shit scheduled for the 22nd. They embraced his latest prediction with a terrifying gusto and decided to ring in the end of the world together right in the heart of American sin, New York City. Heath and I, of course, lived in New York City at the time. Hell, the, the store that we worked at was on Fifth Avenue. And that's precisely the street where Camping's followers gathered for the big apocalypse. Hell, Camping was so accommodating, he even scheduled the end of the world for 6 p.m. local time on a Saturday, and Heath and I were getting off around 5. I, I was writing the schedule at the time, and that wasn't a coincidence. But anyway, now, for those of you inclined to make me feel old by not really remembering this shit, I should remind you that Harold Camping's ministry spent hundreds of thousands of dollars leading up to this thing, buying up a bunch of billboards, telling everybody this was going to be the day to the end of the world. I mean, you know, there are failed apocalypses three times a week these days, but this was one of the few recent ones that really insinuated itself into the public consciousness. And unlike the last one that did that leading up to the year 2000, this one insinuated itself under the heading of dumb shit that stupid people believe, rather than, you know, reasons I need an insane amount of bottled water in my closet before midnight tonight. And let me just say that watching the disappointment play out in person was an unforgettable moment because, you know, we're watching them, but they're watching us watch them, too, and we're watching them watch us watch them. And on both sides of the line, everybody's thinking those poor dumb bastards have no idea what's about to happen. And then, as if some atheist prankster created a weather machine for just this occasion, in the minutes leading up to 6 p.m., the skies actually did darken in Manhattan. 
I mean, it was nothing all that dramatic, but gray clouds filled in the sky just as they're entering into their big countdown. And at exactly 6 p.m., a stiff breeze picks up and a bit of rain starts falling. And you could see a look of condescending vindication wash over their faces. But then it, it just stopped. <laughs> it's like, you know, 123 raindrops fell, the wind died back down, and then the sun came out. And they all wore this weird-ass expression that I've never seen before and I hope to never see again. It was an expression that just said they were profoundly disappointed that me and all the people around me weren't dead. That's the kind of shit that sticks with you. I mean, look, the, the fact that their end of the world coincided with our practice record, that was a coincidence. Saturday evening was the easiest one for us to all get together for a couple hours. We we planned it way in advance. So I'm not saying it was the inspiration for this show. But looking back on it now, I feel like the stark terror I felt when I watched them begrudge my survival had a lot to do with the reason we invested the next year and a half learning how to do this shit. It's exactly the kind of thing that reminds you why atheist activism matters. They're talking about your Jesus. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a special news bulletin. Joining me for headlines tonight are the Cuphead and Mugman to my elder kettle, Heath Edwright and Eli Bosnick. Fellas, are you ready to make a deal with the devil? Yeah, I'll make a deal with the devil. A Antonio Guterres seems like a good guy. <laughs> it. Yes. <laughs> so, yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, Eli, did you like that joke? You enjoyed yes. that one? No, I, I loved you, you like that a lot. I, I love oh, that reference. So really? good. Mm -hmm. Right. Cool. Uh, Eli, real quick. Who is... Don't Antonio Guterres, who I just he referenced. played. Mm, maybe start again. Who sand boots? Okay. <laughs> so, for for what it's worth, Eli, you probably could have jujitsued that shit just by asking Heath who Cuphead and Mugman are. Damn it! Yeah. See, miss my Video chance. Game. <laughs> In our lead, God damn it! In our lead story tonight. We have yet more evidence that Mother Teresa was a terrible, demonic, pain-obsessed, sociopathic cult leader. And that's on top of all the definitive pile of evidence that we already had. And, and I have to constantly remind myself that there's a lot of people who don't already know that. But yeah, she was a fucking monster who literally tortured children as a rite of sanctification. She fetishized poverty to such a degree that she forced her patients to live in squalor even when she had the means to improve their conditions. And thanks to a new podcast by two former nuns who worked for her in the Missionaries of Charity, we also know that it was a goddamn cult that used every trick in the cult book to subjugate its members. Yeah, we get a lot of lobs in atheism, but where is the atheist Mother Teresa? Is our T-ball, ladies and gentlemen. It is our T-ball. <laughs> right. yeah. that's, that's right up there with show me one violent thing in the Bible. <laughs> now, look, I, I, I should spend at least a second on the distinction between cult and religion because there's a lot of people I know, a lot of atheists just heard me say that. Oh, of course, it's a fucking cult. It was Catholic. But, but it's not just a matter of social acceptability, right? To say otherwise is both wrong and dangerous because, sure, all religions are culty. And, and all religions are dangerous, but they're not all equally dangerous. It's like sandwichness. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sure. Sure. But if we adopt the every religion is a cult mindset, then we would kind of need a new term to deal with the thing that everybody else means when they say cult. Right. Like all the telltale signs of cults are just extreme versions of shit that you find in every religious groups. But the degree matters. You can be a member of a lot of religions without completely cutting off ties with your family and surrendering your name, for example. And we do a disservice to members of both cults and non cult religions when we act like the harm that each of them causes is the same. Yeah. So that's right. Non cult religions. You are somewhat less terrible you're welcome <laughs> but seriously that is an important yeah distinction. you're you're often yeah. somewhat less yeah. terrible yeah no seriously important distinction you really are somewhat less terrible yeah absolutely i mean not Sometimes. by tenant you just end up with enough not assholes that you lose your culty origins 100 well, right yeah no, <laughs> right even very often they start as cults yeah. yeah yeah you're like the taco of sandwiches yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly anyway so the point is that the thing mother Teresa was leading was a cult even by the most strict definition of that word. Okay, in the new podcast, The Turning, The Sisters Who Left, two former members of Missionaries of Charity talk about wanting to, like, escape but being under constant surveillance. They talk about wanting to see dying family members but not being allowed to. They talk about being forced to regularly self-flagellate. And they talk about all kinds of other shit that would be, like, immediately identified as cult behavior if it weren't so heavily associated with Catholicism. Yep. Okay. So I know 
Waco went badly. Oh, yes, Jesus it went Christ. badly. <laughs> but, oh, an interesting but. There's a but here. I, you're a big enough cult that we won't use tanks. Doesn't feel like the best policy either. Right, I think yeah. it's somewhere in between those things. Yep. Yep. Compassionate tanks. Right. Something like that. Tiananmen <laughs> Square, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Janet Reno, if you're listening, hit us up. I'm thinking pillows, bright yellow paint. Oh, that could be fun. It could sure. be fun yeah. that way. Yeah. You guys remember Janet Reno? Said yeah. The tank. <laughs> Janet Reno. Was it, uh, was it just a car in general? Mm-hmm. Now, as I've always, are you just making sure you didn't get that wrong? <laughs> she I was, was nice. the lady from, yeah, okay. Cut. So Black. now, <laughs> as I've already said, the fact that Mother Teresa is a terrible person is nothing new. Christopher Hitchens wrote a whole fucking book about it called The Missionary Position, because, you know, he's clever like that. And a Excellent. physician from Calcutta <laughs> named Arup Chatterjee became a nationally recognized figure for drawing attention to her charity's standard of care or lack thereof. Right. It, it can only be aptly described as torture. Yep. Like she fetishized pain to such a degree that she denied pain relieving medicines to dying patients so as not to rob them of their divine suffering. She ordered that children be tied to their bed. She insisted that her hospitals reuse hypodermic needles because of frugality. You know, again, they could afford new ones. Mm-hmm. They just didn't. And for all the assholes who want to deploy the, well, you know, she couldn't have controlled every aspect of that giant mi- mission defense. Like, I want to point out that all this shit started getting significantly better immediately upon her death. So, yeah, she was the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Hot tip. Anyone who thinks God is guiding their medical care always doing a worse job than someone who doesn't think that yeah, always, pretty much all the time. pretty much yeah and, and by the way in case these revelations are new to any of our listeners i want to point out that all of this shit except the latest revelation of the mission's cult-like behavior was a matter of public record before the vatican made a saint out of her mm-hmm. and in warning gable news Right-wing pastor and man who dresses like a character from the video game Fast Draw Showdown Geriatric Edition, Andrew Womack, had opinions about gay people this week, namely that we should put warning labels on their foreheads because they are hazardous to your health. Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess I want one of those labels, too. I am definitely hazardous to Andrew Womack's health, very potentially. (laughs) (laughs) Look, I, I feel like the guy whose group just spent a pandemic refusing to wear masks and Christ persecution when to-go cups are insufficiently humbled before their Lord needs to shut the fuck up about warning labels on people, right? <laughs> are we bit. playing with warning labels now? Yeah. <laughs> We're doing labels. Is that was your idea? Was that yours? Yeah. I'm going to so, sew mine on you. <laughs> so on last week's episode of the Truth and Liberty livecast, Womack's guest was bemoaning the fact that gays are taken over and nobody watched her shitty documentary because it got kicked off Vimeo. <laughs> and that is when the discussion of health hazards of homosexuality came up with Womack saying, quote, homosexuals have like three times as much suicide as heterosexuals. And then you go into transgenders sick and it just continues to go up End quote. Okay. Maybe we're not hate crime hard enough to help them out. Let's, uh, let's make up some new slurs. Yeah. I guess, right. Right. Let's let's get, I'm sorry, the fact that slurs. You can bully somebody into suicide. Sure. Says something negative about them. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's what you're saying. <sighs> he concludes quote, it's a very destructive lifestyle. They have 20 years less that the homosexual lives than a heterosexual. And, you know, cigarettes take an average of seven years off a person's life. So homosexuality is three times worse than smoking. We ought to put a label across their forehead. This can be hazardous to your health. End quote. And uh, if a gay trans person lights a cigarette, they explode. It's just math. It's 20 times 7. It's 140 percent. They Another die four dies. years earlier than when they did that. It's really weird. It's time traveling. Now, that said, I think Womack might be onto something. Obviously, not in labeling gay people out of bigotry, but everyone by their sexual preference. I just think uh, it would make everything a lot simpler. Imagine what that would be like. What that would be like. Hey, Bill, thanks for coming. Oh, no problem, no problem. So, how about these new sexual label name tags they make us wear, huh? Tell me about it. It makes you miss Trump, doesn't it? Well, no. No. No, no yeah, I guess. I guess not. So, uh, f- foot stuff. Yep, yep. Yeah, me and me and the missus both. <laughs> I gotta tell you, it was adorable when we got our labels and then we turned and then they matched. It was... Uh, Aww. It was really nice. Yeah, no, that's it's really sweet. That did not happen with Stacy and I. Yep, 
Yeah, no, Cheryl told me. Uh, any luck on getting her to peg you so far? Nope, nope. But uh, eh, we're still working on it. You know, oh, good, just, good for you. Good for you. That's yeah. hard. Yeah, you know, I, I think it's it's going to be for the best in the long run. It is. Hey, hey, hey. are you guys having a barbecue? Get out of here, you pervert! Frank, what? get the fuck off my property. You, you got. Mm, you guys suck. I hate you guys. Fucking zip liners, man. You tell me about you. You think you know a guy, right? Played with my kids. And in you ab hole. <laughs> yeah, That's such good wordplay. It's coming because University <laughs> of Alabama Birmingham student Jackie Gale has decided that her entire school is in a suicide pact with her. And she's the very first we've heard of, of what I'm sure will be many Christians demanding exemptions to their school's vaccination policy. Great. Yeah, I mean, they're already exempt from a bunch of hate speech policies at universities. Why stop there? Go ahead. Well, I mean, Get more well, exemptions. To, to be fair to Jackie, being dead and attending University of Alabama, Birmingham are so close to the same thing that it's weird for them to draw a distinction. <laughs> I feel like that's weird. <laughs> so... Yeah, according to the letter sent from her attorneys, Miss Gale has several stupid and factually incorrect objections to vaccination. So huh. let's go over them. First, quote, Miss Gale's Christian faith prohibits her from receiving vaccines because of her understanding of the biblical commands that Christians must honor God in how they take care of their bodies and that Christians should not participate in medical treatments that rely upon abortion. Due to these religious convictions, Miss Gale has never had a vaccine injected into her body. Oh, she's had none. So she's already not supposed to be on campus yeah. even before COVID. Right. So, okay, just banner based on all the... Baby free vaccines. Great. Yep. Next. Yeah. So for those of you who aren't familiar with this bullshit, this is a reference to the fact that all three of the major vaccine makers do confirmation tests using fetal cell lines. And those fetal cell lines were originally harvested 40 fucking years ago from elective abortions, but have since gone through hundreds of generations. And it's like saying, I refuse to be treated by any doctor if anyone in their family has ever had an abortion. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, if anything, she's killing that fetus by not getting the shot. She's right. a baby killer. Right. Yeah. There you go. Just, look, I just want to point out that these motherfuckers believe the 900th generation of that fetal cell line carries some vestige of the original abortion, but they freak the fuck out when you start talking about reparations. Yeah. Weird. Weird. Huh? <laughs> Whole fucking thing is based on us still carrying sins from a goddamn apple people yep and that brings us to her second objection quote miss gale believes the bible commands christians to honor god and how they take care of their bodies which leads her to maintain an active lifestyle eat a healthy diet and to refrain from injecting extra chemicals into her body oh my god that's so stupid miss gale what? believes that she would be profaning her body and therefore dishonoring god by receiving any vaccines end quote Sorry, which elements from the periodic table are the extra ones? Is it <laughs> the alkali metals are extra, and then the other ones are like real, regular it's ones? Very clearly the noble gases, dude. But so <laughs> the key here, the distinction here is that the things that keep her from dying are imperatives. The things that keep her from killing other people are extra, right? Yeah. Those, that's how yeah, you know which right, chemicals no. are which. Keep yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah, so a couple other things. As the letter says... Miss Gale believes the Bible commands her not to have any interaction with any things, but it doesn't. The Bible doesn't say that. I mean, look, I, I could be correct about this. Our a lawyer, Andrew Torres of the Opening Arguments podcast, is constantly surprising me with how much sincerely held lava you're allowed to pour on your genitals in this country, even <laughs> when okay. the Supreme Court isn't <laughs> packed with extras from God's Not Dead 4. But, I, I mean, I really don't know. I don't think you're allowed to just be like, my client believes that the Bible says he can shit in the salad bar at TGI Friday. <laughs> and even if you are, we ignore that shit all the time, right? Like, I, I can't walk into HSBC, take out a loan, and then send them a letter from my lawyer saying that the Bible is against charging interest, even though the Bible is against charging you know, it's interest. very clear on that, Whoa. yeah. You can do that. You could send mm -hmm. the oh, letter. Well, right, yeah. And, uh, you know, HSBC can own your house. Yep. You, the, there's consequences. Yeah, and look, if legally those things are allowed, even though they shouldn't be, if you're a student of University of Alabama, Birmingham, 
please consider joining my new church whose central tenant is neck darting religious assholes with the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. Yep. It's very sincere. We mean it a lot. There you go. Fuck. I hate religion. I hate it so <laughs> much. All right. Well, with the essence of our show thus distilled, I think it's a great time to pause for a word from this week's first sponsor, all birds. So many adults playing pretend in uh, so many ways. Uh, hey, Heath. Hey, Noah. What's uh, w- what's with the banner? Come on in, buddy. We need to talk to you. Yeah. So, Eli, this is an intervention. What? A- an intervention for what? For your sneakers, dude. They need to change. What? My Velcros? Yep. No, I get these at, at mall store. Yep. I get them you at know, the... You get them at the mall store, and you need some real shoes. Yeah, it looks like, you know, it looks like they gave you those at the hospital you escaped from. Yeah, man. It's time for some tree runners from Allbirds for you. What are the tree runners from Allbirds? They're made from sustainable, natural materials that feel light on your feet, and they're better for the planet. The tree runners are breathable, machine washable, and made with responsibly sourced eucalyptus tree fiber. But more importantly, they don't look like they were put on you at the same time as a straight jacket. Yes, that's very important. And Allbirds actually sent us a pair to try, and they instantly became my new walking around shoe. They feel amazing, and they look sharp and stylish. You're saying my, my Velcros don't look sharp and stylish? That is nope. exactly what I'm saying. Nope. They, they look like you lost your shoes, and these were the ones the bowling lane sent you home with. Mm-hmm. So this spring, keep things light and breezy with the Allbirds Tree Runner. Discover your perfect pair at allbirds.com today. That's A-L-L-B-I-R-D-S dot com. Okay, I guess I'll try some, but... I can still always wear these athletic shorts, right? These are still Uh, cool. Just give us a second to change the banner. We're going to change it up, yeah. Aw, beans. Next up in headlines, the visible light spectrum is sometimes referred to as a rainbow. Anna? (laughs) (laughs) Talking about it's the newest, the greatest Christian freakout. That's right. Christians are freaking out after the Lego company released a new rainbow-colored set called Everyone is Awesome. In honor of Pride Month. Okay, well, that freak out I can get behind. Everyone is not awesome. Everyone includes Ben Shapiro, Lego. Think. <laughs> it's think. A story. <laughs> you guys, you remember the good old days when they had to, like, dance around the fact that they were against equality? <laughs> oh, remember that? <laughs> so, <sighs> the big Lego freak out came from Alfred Moeller, president of the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. He wrote a 2,500 word freak out treatise about the, the sexuality of plastic blocks. Yep. <laughs> and it's not clear, but I think he's also very protective of the Christian-only word awesome. Yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. Here's a little snippet. Quote, what exactly does awesome mean? Is everyone awesome all the time? Are you going to speak of everyone as equally awesome? Does it have anything to do with sexuality? Say what now? <laughs> Wait, oh, okay, he's about to ask us for a cock rating. I know this message. I'm <laughs> That's getting, what's uh, about to happen, yes. Yeah. Okay, look, Al, speaking as a man who once swore generational vengeance on an interstate exit sign, I'm going to go ahead and tell you... <laughs> That's a weird way to be pissed off, right? Because you're dancing around what you really want to say, but what you're actually saying is your poster says you only have to believe in yourself, but you also have to digest food and unconsciously regulate your body temperature, you son of a bitch. Come on, dude. What about the autonomic nervous system? You're such an asshole. <laughs> you didn't even mention that. <laughs> so I guess he's going for the Harrison Bergeron argument. Yeah. <laughs> Vonnegut was warning about the danger of gay Lego sets. Yeah, he yeah, always exactly. said that. Yeah, That's exactly. very important. Yeah, so it's actually a, a misreading of a misreading of the Harrison Bergeron <laughs> yeah, argument. Right, yeah. Muller also added, quote, here's where Christians need to lean in. Oh, I agree. Christians need to lean into Legos. <laughs> <laughs> There's a brokenness here. There's a hurt here. That cries out for Christian attention. Well, you shouldn't have leaned in all them Legos. <laughs> <laughs> There's a fear that's represented even in the voice of a child here, for which the answer is supposedly the everyone is awesome Lego set. End quote. So what the fuck is he talking right? about? Great what is he even <laughs> trying to say there? I honestly don't know. Okay, to be fair, if you're selling the cure. You're not sick is an awfully troubling philosophy. Yeah. <laughs> so we've seen some stupid freakouts yes, we have. here at the Scathing Atheist. I don't remember all the details of all of them because they're stupid. Really but stupid. I'm pretty sure that includes very recently, in fact, 
Match.com collaborating with Satan, the Prince of Darkness. Yep, that was one. Burger King saying the D word. That's damn, by the mm-hmm. way. Yep. A hot sauce not saying the S word. Mm-hmm. Very pissed off. Hamilton yeah. being miscegenated. Uh. And Kit Kat doing something with a penis that wasn't an explicitly hetero penis, I guess. <laughs> but this Lego thing is a special kind of freak out. It's about photons. Photons are persecution now. Yep. According to Christianity. Mm. Chef's kiss. Yeah. And in Puzzle in a Thunderdome news tonight. Fantastic. Thank you. It really doesn't fit with the story. I just really wanted to say it. God seems to be in an especially <laughs> vengeful mood this week. And, and, and that's for a guy who gives cancer to 7,000 children a week. But apparently that plus the existence of death, disease, and Zack Snyder movies wasn't enough for him. And we know this because we have stories of not one, but two prominent Christian voices threatening their critics with divine retribution, and they're both weirdly specific. OMG, did I get a mention? I Googled myself this morning. How did I miss it? (laughs) Okay. If Eli's trending for this, that's a win for us. It could have been so much goddamn. (laughs) We we have a lot of backup plans, and none of them are for this. (laughs) Right. All right, so we're going to start off with televangelist Robin Bullock. I killed a man. <laughs> now, if you've never seen Bullock, I'm going to need you to imagine that Heath and I joined forces with Mike Lindell's crack addiction, fused into a single entity, and made an embarrassing run at a career in country music. He's so rough. He looks like Ned Stark having a midlife crisis right. based on Jackie. <laughs> yes! Anyway, so so Robin, who totally isn't wearing a wig and has successfully convinced me that that's his real hair, told his audience that if anybody made fun of him, God would unleash the scarecrow toxin from Batman Begins on their ass. Quote, yes, he did. However you treat the mouth of God, it determines your future. It's a dangerous thing to tear the garments of a prophet. That's a dangerous thing to mock the mouthpiece of God. It's very dangerous to do such things as that. Very dangerous. Once that happens, it leads to one thing. It leads to insanity. End quote. Oh my God, his thread is literally, I'm not crazy, you're crazy. (laughs) (laughs) Also, free drugs from God. Like, right? Yeah. Yeah. Fun to say. The scarecrow thing could be fun. I think I would get into that drug. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, but not to be, what's the opposite of outdone? Not to be in done? (laughs) Self proclaimed prophet Hank (laughs) Kuhneman. of One Voice Ministry also issued a threat on behalf of his God this week. Kuhneman is among the bevy of Christian zealots who keep hitting the prophetic snooze button on their promises that Trump will slash did win the election and will slash did assume the presidency at some point. Anyway, he's sick of people pointing out how demonstrably wrong he is, but what's worse, God is sick of it too. And that's why God informed us via Hank Kuhneman, of course, (laughs) that he intended to inflict people who criticize him with leprosy. Okay. Interesting. Did you guys put him up to this as a ruse to get me to bathe? You have to tell me. It's like being a cop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When your dick falls off, I really want it to be clean. That's my big focus. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, so here's the quote. Quote, there's a lot of people touching many of God's true and choice servants right now. Holy shit. I could spend the rest of the episode on that phrasing, you lonely, lonely man. It's anyway, it's continue. <laughs> Top they, shelf choice <laughs> round <laughs> Kobe beef servants. <laughs> so, anyway, he goes on to say, they better be careful because God will not acknowledge certain things that he's called them to or put within their offices. It's a dangerous place. And some of you might get leprosy. End quote. Yeah. My big brother, who's ignored me for the last year and a half. Okay, well, technically forever. But anyways, he might kick your ass. <laughs> All right. Well, time to grind up some fetus arms and make a vaccine for leprosy. Yeah, right. I think that's right, exactly. the only well, option. Or, or you could just use the antibiotics that easily treat leprosy in the modern day. So, yeah, two possibilities, of course. One is that by this time next week, I'll be an insane person with leprosy. Another is that Hank Kuhneman and Robin Bullock are full of shit and there is no God. And I should note that these possibilities are not mutually exclusive. Yep, that's fair. And finally tonight, in non-clungeable token news. Oh, well done. We have a story about NFT artwork and vaginas. NFT stands for non-fungible token, and it's a general term for anything with ownership verified by the blockchain, like a Bitcoin. But cryptocurrency isn't the only use of the blockchain. Sometimes people use the blockchain to verify their unique ownership of 
artwork as a certificate mm-hmm. of authenticity. We actually talked about this on another show recently. Yeah, it's uh, called The Skeptocrat. Maybe you've heard of it. It's in the New York Times. It was. Yeah, it's in New York. And the story <laughs> was about an artist named Beeple who set a new record by selling a JPEG for $69 million at Christie's Auction House. <sighs> and that's fucking stupid. I'm furious about NFT artwork about once an hour <laughs> since I discovered right, yeah. that this exists. But... <laughs> We might have finally found a good use for this stuff. Model, actor, and singer Cara Delevingne is raising money for women's rights, the LGBT community, and the environment by auctioning off their vagina as an NFT. Okay. Well, now I feel better about not getting what NFT stands for. I- <laughs> <laughs> so Delevingne is gender fluid and came out publicly as pansexual last year. Of course, that went along with a jingle from Anna and mm-hmm. a giant freak yep. out by the Christian right. Mm-hmm. Just like when Elliot Page did anything yep. recently. Yep. Anything at all. <laughs> like when he stood near a pool. That was the freak out last week yep. about Elliot Page. Freak out in my pants, maybe. <laughs> Elliot Page was looking good next to that pool. Right? Yeah. Well, it looks like Delavine shit out of found that, a great way to channel the panicky rage of the Christian right into a fundraiser for everything they hate. And despite... My panicky rage about NFT artwork. <laughs> this is a great cause. Delavine teamed up with artist Chemical X. I'm letting it go. I'm letting it go. It's a good cause. Yeah, because your name's Heath Edwright. My name's No Illusions. That's X. probably part of it. Yeah. Uh, it's we're not Beeple. It's different, <laughs> but it's the same. You're right. Okay. Oh, my new name is Beeple. I'm Beeple. No, the absolutely, no people, absolutely none of this. This is more. Beeple is taking. You could be. You could be Beeply Bosnick though. Oh, mm. Beeple Beep. Snick. Morgan, people that. So <laughs> Chemical X and Delavine created the vagina-based NFT art piece. This includes a video of Delavine explaining, quote, my first word was mine. To me, that means something that is most mine. My vagina. I own it. It's mine and no one else's, end quote. And that's now for sale in whatever sense. So that's, Okay, yeah. I want to be cool because this is a good cause, but do you guys feel like your junk is the thing that's most yours? Nope. Because because that <laughs> motherfucker was and still is very much not under my control. Yeah, it might be different <laughs> with different junk. I don't know. I also I I also want to go on record, and I think Heath would agree with me, saying that you could support this while still thinking that the whole NFT art thing is fucking dumb. Right, yeah, like, that's, like, that's the whole point so, yeah, of the story. If, yes. if, if people are buying leprechaun farts, you might as well sell some leprechaun farts for women's rights or whatever. That sure. doesn't make it any less dumb. I want to be <laughs> right. super clear where we stand on that. Great, great cause. Great work, Cara Delevingne. I want to sell the picture of me licking Ray Comfort. By the way, speaking of Christian freakouts, <laughs> Delevingne is also working on a new line of sex toys for all genders and sexualities. In response to the trend in the sex toy industry of Everything pretty much being a dick, the new brand is going to focus on anything but that, which is, again, great work. Just just so many other body parts to smoosh into and around your stuff. I like yeah, that. I think finally, it's a good idea. The, the elbow dildo we've all been waiting for. <laughs> right. That's uh, not specifically what Eli said, but a uh, general concept. Yes. That's so what Heath means. The, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not an elbow guy. So the auction for the NFT is happening right now. It's happening this week. And pretty soon... The artistic digital concept of Delavine's vagina, which is theirs and no one else's, is going to be a non-fungible token in the blockchain that's going to be owned by someone else, which is confusing to me. Or maybe the video is the art. Yeah, but- uh, I'm not clear on it, but I just watched that video for free. Right, yeah. So this is why I hate NFT art. It's stupid. It's fucking stupid. Either way, <laughs> the money goes to spite bigotry. So I'm happy. It's good stuff. Also, I have a big announcement. I am auctioning off the theoretical idea of my left love handle as an NFT. Oh. Yeah. And it's a sex toy, actually, <laughs> because everything is a sex toy. They have to let you fuck it if you want. That's true. All proceeds will benefit the Cara Delevingne Foundation or the charity of your choice. Andrew has made it clear that I have to add here that they do not have to let you fuck it if you want. That is not a thing. Okay, sorry, Heath, <laughs> can I just tell you I want to buy that on the podcast? Because 
I'm pretty sure you knowing that I'm going to fuck your love handle is a great prank. And I just I need to get that out of the way right now. Everyone except Eli can send me a tweet about this stuff. This is my Vanta Black. This is my Vanta Black paint. <laughs> Welcome to the show, new listener. And quick <laughs> while I burn out the part of my brain that has that image in it, we're going to close the headlines for the night. Heath, Eli, thanks as always. Elbows. And when we come back, Don Ford will be here to blast beam with style. podcast listener i know when we do our ads we usually do like a funny sketch or something like that but this week i thought i'd share a true story about this week's sponsor stamps.com so unlike noah and heath my boss at the old toy store was not a jerk okay well technically noah was my boss right well so my boss's boss they're they're a british company and general retail stuff aside they always treated me pretty well and we're an occasional touch since i've done this job which i admittedly like much, much more. So this week, my boss's boss's dad was actually featured in the New York Times. And so he calls me because he's been running around London trying to find copies of it, except because it's in the Sunday edition, he can't find it anywhere. So he calls me up on the cell phone. He says, hey, I know it's the end of the day here. Do you mind running around your town in Jersey, finding as many copies of this thing as you can and sending them to me in England? So I do it. I run around to 7-Eleven, some local newsstands, CVS. I just buy all the Sunday editions of the New York Times I can like a madman. And then it was time to ship into England. And that's where Stamps.com comes in. See, thanks to the free scale they send you when you open an account, I just popped them in a box waited on the website using my computer, and then printed the postage I needed on my printer at home. And thanks to Stamps.com, I got the best rates possible. With Stamps.com, you get discounts of up to 40% off post office rates and up to 66% off UPS shipping rates. So a favor that would have cost me literally hundreds of dollars was a fraction of the price. Add to the fact that Stamps.com has made sending out Patreon rewards a breeze. Stamps.com is an awesome choice. Whether you're a small business, a giant warehouse sending out packages, or just doing a favor for your old boss, Stamps.com lets you do it all with ease from your computer and printer. Stop wasting time going to the post office and go to Stamps.com instead. There's no risk, and with our promo code, SCAVING, you get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage in a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in SCAVING. That's Stamps.com, promo code SCAVING. Stamps.com. Never go to the post office again. I like it when we do the shenanigans for the end. We'll do shenanigans for the next one. But if we buy Dogecoin low, when it goes high, that's when we sell yeah, yeah. it. No, I'm, I'm familiar with the terms low and high. That's not the problem. Because that's when we buy it, when it's okay. low. Hey, hey, guys, are you ready for Bible Peace Theater? Yes, God. Anything but this. So where did we leave off? Okay, so Saul is dead. Samuel is way dead. And David is finally king. Right. Yes. So he started ruling when he was 30 and he ruled for 40 years before his story really picks up. Damn. It's like the nevers up in this here. Dude, spoilers, please. I didn't spoil anything. I just said it is like the nevers. Yeah, it's going to get canceled anyway because... Everyone hates Joss Whedon. Everyone hates your mom. Well, Everyone hates your mom. That's how involved you like that. it anymore. Better not be canceled. Anyway, after 40 years of rule, he goes to Jerusalem to declare it his city. Hear me, city of Jerusalem. I am David, your king, and I am here to rule you. Not so fast. What's that? It is us, the Jebusites. And you will not rule this city until you take away our blind and our lame. <laughs> Whatever. I hate blind people, so that's perfect. In fact, men, whoever kills the most blind people gets to be the captain of my army. Sorry, he hates blind and lame people? Yeah, so the the modern apologetic is that it's like ancient smack talk. Right, yeah, the Jebusites are basically saying... You couldn't even kill our blind and lame people as like uh, smack talk. Yeah, yeah, okay. This is a weird insult. Well, yeah, and it's it's worth noting that that's a pretty modern interpretation. Like this passage was actually used as a way to blame disabled people for their disabilities for a really long time. Got it. So at best, it's smack talk using disabled people as the butt of the joke, mm -hmm. but more likely it's just biblical genocide again. More. More, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So David kills a bunch of blind and lame people, I guess, and he takes over the city, which he names the City of David. 
He takes some more wives and concubines. He has 11 more sons. Ooh, at 70? Good for him. Right? But eventually, the Philistines find out that he's ruling the city, and they come to rumble. Um, God? David, baby, how you doing, boo? Yikes. What? What's yikes? No, it's just... This bit feels a little stale. What? Already? It's May. How could this... Yeah, I know. It's just... It's kind of like... Are we still going to be doing this in a few years? It it feels a little bit like a Monica Lewinsky joke circa 2006. You know what I mean? Okay, first of all, she's on Twitter now, and she's hilarious. Second of all, we have been doing this bit for two years now. We're just going to switch me over to Noah doing a boomy voice now? I mean... I just feel like if the goal is to make fun of the Bible, Noah doing boomy voices God is going to serve us better now that Trump isn't president anymore. Hey, Eli, really need you to stop working this out in character during the show. I needed to say goodbye. On our comedy podcast? A lot of people are going to miss Donald Trump as God bit. They need this. Trust me. I mean, I feel like you need this. Don, you don't even go here. Don't you speak to Don like that. Can't even tell your Donald Trump from your Joe Biden most of the time. So, what did you need? Right. Uh, well, we've got a fight coming up with the Philistines, and I was wondering if we should attack them from the front. Hmm, no. I'm thinking you wait up in the trees, and then, when you hear them coming, you drop down and attack them. Oh, like, like ninjas? Like ninjas, exactly. Yes. Sweet. Sweet, got it. Jews, we are victorious! Hooray! Boys, fans, magic. We must celebrate, bring the ark, and we will play and dance before it. We play? What do we play? Every kind of instrument. Uh, every kind? Yes, literally every kind of instrument. Even the symbol? Uh, yes, that's going to be named in the book, so play the symbol. Uh, that's it. I'm done. Nope. You know what? Kind of a limited yeah. instrument in retrospect. Anyways, everyone, thong dance for God. Thong Whee! dance for God. Yeah. 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 Oh, whoops. I fell and touched the ark. How dare you? Dude, God killed him. Ah, oh, yikes. Yes. Yes, he did. Back. Back to the thong dance? Mm, kind of feels like the moment's dead yeah, now, right? Yeah. Okay, fine. Uh oh. I'll do a thong dance myself. I guess for a 70 year old guy, he's really going for it there, right? Yeah, he's going Bring for it. it. Kind of looks like someone put a box of raisins in a paint mixer. He's like a strip club stayed in the bath way too long. Right, like if an old age home put on a production of the movie Cats. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, everyone. Now that I've done my thong dance, we're going to bring the ark home. But, but just so we don't make God mad, we're going to sacrifice an ox... And a fat calf every six steps. Every six steps? Yep, yep, every six steps. Okay, just feels like that's going to take a while. I mean, that's really going to slow us down. Super oh, slow down. No, Do I am that. aware of that, but can I remind you that yesterday God killed a guy for falling down and touching the ark. So, you know, yeah. maybe better safe than sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, yeah, mm-hmm. I get it. All right, so let's get started. One, two, three, four... Five, six. Okay, everyone, stop, 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 stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Set Every up the here. sacrifice okay, stuff. Yep. Every uh, seven. Yeah. You guys want to get killed by God? Because we could go for seven I, steps. I no, 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 I don't want to be trying. killed by God. Whatever. Okay. Honey, I'm home. I brought all the Jews with me. Oh, hello. Uh, my husband didn't tell me you were all coming over. How thoughtful of him. Yeah, well, they're here now. So I mean, we could go. There's a no, Daniels. no, you stay. 
This is my house. I'm allowed to have guests. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. The big husband who shook his tukas in front of every slave girl in the city yesterday. Oh, yes, how very royal Yikes. of him. He's allowed yeah, to have seems, guests. Seems like you guys might want to mm-hmm. talk this out privately. No, you all. all stand there and watch this. Well, maybe <sighs> I'll go and honor those slave girls in a way I can't bring myself to honor you anymore, oh, if you know oh, what I mean. honor me. Honor me. Sure, Mr. I had a heavy dinner. Yeah, you go show those slave girls what you're made of. I will. I'm gonna. Please let us leave. Sit down. We're all eating a nine-course meal, and this conversation is going to take place in front of you the entire time. And so it was that old Jews would have big, loud, messy fights in front of people at dinner for the rest of history. Eli, Eli, get out of the voiceover booth. People need to know. So David rules for a little while longer until one day he's approached by the prophet Nathan. Hail, King David. I bring a message from God. Nice, nice. I haven't heard from that dude in a while. What does he want? Yeah, he wants you to build him a house. God would like me to build him a house. A house, yep. Doesn't he live, like, up in heaven? Yes, yep. He he does live up in heaven, but he would like a house for his tabernacle, please. The the ark thing. He wants a house for that. Yep. Up until now, that ark, it's mostly been in, like, tents and wagons and stuff, and he was just thinking a house would be nice. Um, and, and, as a reward, you and your family will be royalty forever. Hmm. I'm not going to lie. I feel like he's promised that to other people. Yeah, uh, six in the book so far. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Am I related to any of those guys? You that he are promised? not. Got it. So when he says that, it's a very... Very liberal use of the words, you know, you and your family mm-hmm. forever. That's that's just sort of like a, yep, a liberal very use. very liberal use. Also, he would like a kitchen island. Oh, come on. Who wants a kitchen island? Uh, God does. He, he's going to use it when he entertains. How? Who wants that? How is he going to use it when he... You can put cheese boards in there and stuff. When people come over, it's classy. You have cheese boards. You got he's the He's not going to use it's it. Nice. It's just going to close off the space. I'll tell you that right Cecil now. He still has a kitchen island and he puts cheese boards on it all the time. God wants an island for cheese boards. Okay, okay. Get it. Kitchen Island. Thank you. And so it was that God killed more people and never really used the Kitchen Island after all. But that's a story for another day on another edition of Bible Peace Theater. He actually uses them in the Apocrypha. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, podcast listener. I'm No Illusions. I'm Heath Enright. And I'm Eli Bosnick, reminding you it's the final week of Matreon. That time of year when we ask you for money extra hard so that we can pretty much leave you alone the rest of the year. Our new and upgrading patrons have helped make some amazing stuff happen over the years. Yeah, for instance, last year, you guys helped me quit smoking. Yes, you did. But you also fund our live shows, convention appearances, and new projects like D&D Minus. And as of this recording, more than 300 of you have already upped your pledge by as little as a dollar. But there's still time to give. So head over to Matreon.com. That's M-A-Y-T-R-E-O-N.com to sign up and donate. And remember, no matter what show you donate to, all of our patrons will be invited to our Pajama Party live stream on August 7th. It's going to be our first get-together as a cast in more than a year. Noah, Lucinda, Heath, and Andrew is actually going to be meeting my baby for the first time. We're going to be playing games. I'm going to do magic. I'm going to juggle. And just so much more. So one more time. Huge thanks to all of you who have already donated. And if you're able to toss us a couple bucks and you haven't yet, now is the time to do it. Please. Matreon, may we please have some money? Ugh, you ruined it. I didn't ruin it. You love puns. That's not a pun. pun. Wordplay. Mm -hmm. It's time for the part of the show that comes next. The listener feedback. This is the part of the show that shows up when you least expect it, even though it's always in the same place. And our first message comes from Yoel, who says... Minor correction for Noah, you were talking about the popularity of the Nintendo Entertainment System in one of your rants recently, and you said they could sell thousands of copies of a 7-Up ad if they called it a video game. Hate to call you out on this, but the game you're thinking of was on the Super Nintendo, and just so happens to be one of the greatest platformers of the 16-bit era. Talking about actually a game I had, I love that game. (laughs) Anyway, continuing, keep up the good work, end of message. All right, so... Yeah, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna open up by saying I forgive you. <laughs> Heath and Eli know what a mistake you made. 
trying to come at me with video game trivia, but you didn't know. And yes, the 1993 platformer Cool Spot was a 16-bit game, as was its follow-up Spot Goes to Hollywood. I think it's a little much to call it one of the best platformers of their generation. It was a good fucking game, though. But I was referencing the 1990 game Spot the Video Game, which was a far less popular NES release loosely based on Go. Hate to call you out on this, but if you Google 7-Up game for NES, it, it does show up. And that has fewer words than your email did. But thank you, Yoel, for <laughs> reaching out. Anyway. You come for the king? You come for the king? <laughs> and finally, we got a few messages about the comments that I made last week about being culturally Jewish and the skit that we did afterwards. Like I said, several people wrote in, but I thought our friend Iran from Australia summed up the objections pretty well. Quote, and he said a lot of other complimentary stuff at the beginning at the end. Uh, I'm just, but I'm just, I'm just giving you the meat here. Quote, being Jewish is not just a religion and presenting it that way is unnecessary and problematic. I've never been religious. My grandparents, all four of them, left religion in the 1920s and we haven't had religion in our family since. We have been atheists for literally a century and now five generations, yet we are all Jewish because being Jewish, while fundamentally arising out of religion, I'm not denying that, is also a culture, an ethnicity, a tradition, a group belonging, a shared history, an identity, and in many cases also biologically important. Millennia of inbreeding to thank for that. So I'm not an ex-Jew who's now an atheist. I'm an atheist who is also Jewish. And judging by my research, I'm not alone. I'm part of a major chunk of those identifying as Jewish. Others may choose not to identify as Jewish if they are not religious, and I have exactly zero problems with that. But the message that unless you do Jewy things, you're not Jewish is unwarranted, end quote. So I, I guess the, the clear implication of Iran's message is that I don't get a say in how people identify themselves, and that's fair, right? So like in my own defense, I actually had it drilled into my head pretty hard that talking about Jewishness as an ethnicity was anti-Semitic since there are Jews from all different ethnicities ultimately that being said it turns out there's a huge century-long discussion between people who identify as ex-jews and people who identify as atheist jews on this subject and one thing that discussion definitely does not need is me goy explaining how weird it all seems to me okay that is a lovely and thoughtful way to put i know you're wrong but i'm not jewish so i'm gonna let eli do it that's Noah, thank not you. what <laughs> i was saying I but say whatever you'd like to say eli. all right well so, no <laughs> I, I think it's important that that is how we should approach these subjects right if a black listener said hey this is how i self-identify and i think it's harmful when you say otherwise it's a good thing that we shut up and listen but as an ex-jewish person or a person who's born jewish or a secular jew whatever you want to use I get to be a prick, which is great because I almost never get to do that. Almost never? Would we say almost I, never? I feel like you, you're like <laughs> obligated to at least add to people other than Heath. Thank you. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. So Qualifier. first off, and I, I, I want to clarify this again, goes without saying we love Iran, love the work he does with Skepticon, and it's because we love him and respect him as much as we do that I'm going to be a total asshole right now. <laughs> See, Heath, it's because he loves and respects you. Yes, he oh, see, Yeah, no, I wasn't getting that. It's a twofer. So we chose together. his message and not a different one because Iran's a big boy and he's a respected skeptic who we can disagree with without worrying about, like, insulting him or making him feel bullied, right? I mean, Andrew thinks little old ladies should be able to pour lava on their vajuchas. And Iran no. is wrong about being Jewish. We can asshole because we love I mean, I was perfectly nice about it. We had a lovely exchange on Messenger, but I, I, I'm not going to go explain this to you either. So go right ahead. <laughs> so let's break down Iran's claims here. So the first is, as he mentioned, that Jewishness is a culture or a tradition. Jewishness isn't what you believe. It's what you do. But that's true of all religions, right? Evangelicals have a penchant for mayo-based salads, but nobody calls that a culture because if they did, it would render the difference between a culture and a religion meaningless. Well, so to be fair to Aaron, and I might be wrong on this, but I think he's talking about two different things, right? Like Jewishness, the religion as a circle within Jewishness, the culture. Yeah, right, right. But most Jews don't have that stuff in common, right? There's Sephardic Jews, there's Eastern European Jews, there are Chinese converts to Judaism. They all have vastly different cultural histories, traditions, practices, and languages. And it's super duper dismissive to the other cultures other than your own to act like there's just the one, right? Like as Iran said in his message, like, oh, we haven't, we're, we haven't done anything religious for years. And I'm like, okay. What do you do that's Jewish then, right? The, the only traditions and cultures that all Jews have in common 
are religious practices. Yarmulkes, genital mutilation, oh, jean oh. skirts, wigs. Those are religious practices. And you know that they're religious practices because exactly zero Jews do those after they stop believing if they are safe to do so. And the second argument is that if Judaism is an ethnicity or a race, and I, I want to say credit to Iran here, he did not say race. He knows better, but we can't really name another ethnicity that you can convert to or from, right? You can't declare yourself Italian or black, any cultural histories you know of where you can marry into them, right? You ever hear someone say, yeah, you know, my wife's really Hispanic, so I took a month's worth of classes and now I'm Hispanic. No, which means there are only two possibilities here. Either Judaism is the only ethnicity that you can convert into, and I have yet to hear a good explanation for why that is, and I have a lot of follow-up questions if it is true, or converts aren't Jewish. And I think we can all agree that that second thing's not true. And look, I want to acknowledge something that I breezed over in the story because I've talked about it seriously in other places, and it would have been weird to do it in the middle of our comedy show while we were making jokes, which is that deconverting from Judaism is a very different experience than deconverting from Christianity. Now, don't get me wrong, ex-Christians go through some horrendous shit. Our listeners are among them, but historically speaking, it's different. And and not just because of the look your mother gives you, although in my case, it's mostly that. Uh, yeah. the, the main reason Jews have deconverted throughout history was under threat, right? From the Spanish Inquisition to the Holocaust, whether or not to be Jewish often meant the choice between life and death. And a lot of people chose death and Giving up that identity can feel like betraying those people. So when I get on the air and very flippantly just say like, hey, you're not a fucking Jew anymore, I completely understand why that would raise hackles. And honestly, until a few years ago, it did the same thing for me. Now, that doesn't make me wrong about whether Jewishness is an ethnicity. I'm right because otherwise... Baptists would be an ethnicity, but I do want to acknowledge that I get where that pain is coming from. I understand where that sensitivity comes from, and I completely get why people had very strong reactions. And look, to everyone who reached out, and, and I want to say, like, pretty much everyone who reached out was civil and genuine, like Iran was. The parts of you that you think are Jewish, I, I, I can't tell you how to identify. No one's telling you how to identify, but the parts of you that you think are Jewish, even if I'm right, they're not going anywhere because. Those are your family traditions. They're your family history. And in many cases, they are your ethnic history. And nothing you believe is going to change that like matzo balls and latkes and making falafel wrong, even though you know it's way better without pickles, are all parts of who you are. And you can celebrate those things and embrace them, but you can do it without lending credence to extremists who are going to take cover behind you. Okay. Um, and I actually agree with Iran. Um, but we're going to get into the weeds even more if we go into that. <laughs> so, yeah. Ron was yeah. right. Let's move on. <laughs> so, <laughs> how dare you? I feel like we should add one piece of feedback where we don't dunk on anybody. So, like, people will still tell us stuff. I mean, love you, right, Yoel. <laughs> and Ron, thanks for the feedback. Uh, Heath, you got something? Uh, Timmy is a real listener yeah, who reached uh -huh. out. Very real. Timmy, the real listener, reached out to let us know that blueberries are delicious well said timmy i don't care i mean i mean i can't argue with it's that a, okay <laughs> <laughs> damn it noah <laughs> and that's all the feedback you get if you want more keep sending us those emails tweets and facebook messages you'll find all the contact info on the contact page at scathingatheist.com Before we raise the drawbridge tonight i want to let everybody know that we reached the matreon goal where i now have to juggle during the live stream so if you're a patron, you get to watch me do something I was good at eight years ago and haven't really done since. There are other embarrassments in the sites, though. Find out more at Matreon.com. Anyway, that's all the blast we've got for you tonight. We'll be back in 10,022 minutes with more. If you can't wait that long, be able to look out for a brand new episode of our sister show's Hot Friend God Off and Movies Day being at 7 a.m. Eastern on Tuesday and an even new episode of our half-sister show Citation Day today being at noon Eastern on Wednesday. Obviously, the show wouldn't even show up if I neglected to thank Heath Enright for all the extra work he does while I'm getting my face fixed. I want to thank Eli Bosnick for all the extra work he's making Heath do while I get my face fixed. And I want to thank the lovely and talented Lucinda Delusions for all the extra work she's doing while I'm a whiny motherfucker who can't eat anything. I also want to thank Don Ford for reasons that have nothing to do with my face and reasons that do. You don't know everything about me and Don, and you don't need to know. Also, I need to thank the Bitter Atheist for providing this week's Farnsworth quote. Of all the taste-type-based atheists, he's my favorite. But most of all, of course, I want to thank this week's best people... 
Kate Ellipsis, Tim, Mike, Mommy Bunny is fully vaccinated and ready to make you feel better. Woo Free Midwife, Patricia, Raymond, Art, Cameron, patiently waiting for No to appear on Skeptics in the Pub Online, Daniel Stanley, David, Felipe, Lisa, Richard, Nathan, and Marie the Transmarine who are so badass that macaroni noodles straighten up when they get pissed. Together, these 18 ageless atheists aim to aid our alienation of the amoral agents of Abraham this week by giving us money. Not everybody has the wherewithal and therewithal it takes to give us money, but if you're up to the challenge, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash scathingatheist, whereby you'll earn early access to an extended ad-free version of every episode, or you can make a one-time donation by clicking on the donate button on the right side of the homepage at scathingatheist.com. And if you'd like to help but you're not gonna, that's fine too, I guess. You can... Just, you know, work out your own shit first. That's important, too. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robinson handles our social media, and our audio engineer is Morgan Clark. We'll over all the music that was used this episode, which was used with permission. If you have questions, comments, or death threats, you'll find all the contact info on the contact page at scathingatheist.com. They can fuck us. It's, it's, they can fuck us. I'm sure Anthony Fauci would agree. <laughs> Yeah. If you return my calls, coward. <laughs> Say his name right on the message. Jew. <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.